Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. This is episode number 131. And Aaron, we've got uh, quite a few things to talk about. The very first thing though I do want to bring up is uh, these gross, <laughs> gnarly things that are hanging off of our faces right now. Is your wife very happy? No. Not no, happy? Not at all. Okay. How about yours? My, not very happy. My son, however, looked at me straight in the eye and said, wow, you're ugly. <laughs> it's just, it's a knife in my heart. My kids love it. Really? Yes. All three of them. Interesting. Well, yeah. uh, other things that are interesting, we'll be talking about the Sharks here. We've got the uh, end of the five-game road trip that we uh, kind of talked about, the beginning of that in the last episode, and the next two games. Some crazy stuff happening with COVID and whatnot, so uh, that's kind of the first part of the show. Yeah, we'll talk about some of the goalie stats between Reimer and Hill, and uh, Evander Kane's situation. A lot of people have been asking about it. And uh, this week's upcoming games, and also more about our stashes. <laughs> there you go. You ready to start the show? Ready. Well, it's too bad you have to do it yourself because I got to go save the princess. Princess is alive and well, by the way, so we're good there. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, <laughs> it's a me. Anyway. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start off the show. <laughs> what are you laughing about? Okay, what we're laughing about are these nasty mustaches. We're going to put the link right there at the bottom of the screen. It's there for you to click in the description as well. Perfect. Uh, Movember.com. We're doing this for a fundraiser. Yes. This is not just to look ridiculous and to piss our wives <laughs> off. This is, there's a purpose to this. Yeah, so uh, it's it's something that we're going to go and revisit at the, the end of the show. But just so you see it, again, bottom of the screen there in the description, Feel free to click on it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's for a good cause, and uh, we'll get to more about that in just a few. So um, this past week of games, though, uh, mm -hmm. first game against Nashville was a 3-1 loss. Uh, what did you think about the Sharks' effort in that game? I thought they at least tried, but it just didn't seem to come together. Uh, yeah, I think they, they played okay. It wasn't their best game. Obviously, they lost, but uh, UC Saros had, had a pretty good yeah. game. He had made some big saves, and... And I think I talked about him last week that he was going to be a tough goalie to beat. Um, he's kind of he took over the the goal crease from Peke Rene, who retired going into this season. Um, and he's a good goalie, one of the top in the league. And this is why Nashville is going to be a good team and what carries their team uh, because they are. I mean, they're good, well rounded. They have great defensemen uh, who can move the puck well. Uh, Yossi had a really good game. Um, so I it, it was a. It was a good effort by, I think a better effort, I should say, by Nashville than than a poor effort by the Sharks, I think. That's fair enough to say, yeah. I mean, again, I thought, I didn't think they stood out in a really horrible kind of way, right? Um, I just, I have something to say about one of the other games that's coming up here, <laughs> about the way I thought that they played. But in Nashville, it looked like, again, they were trying. Um, it just didn't kind of fall into mm -hmm. uh, into fruition there. And they did run into a pretty decent goaltender in, in UC Saros. So uh, there was a quote that you wanted to talk about. Now, this is Couture talking about Jonathan Dong. Do you want to set this quote up? Sure. Uh, he was asked, I think this was by Shang Peng, asking him about, uh, asking Couture what he thought about uh, Dolan and his game, and because he's been playing on the line with Timo Meyer. And uh, this is what Couture had to say about Dolan. So we'll roll the clip here. Each day, I mean, each day, uh, seems like he's getting better and better and uh, growing accustomed to this league and uh, just such a smart player. I don't want to pat myself on the back, but when I saw him in, in captain's ice and at, before camp, I, I told Doug, this kid's going to be a player. And um, he's so smart with the puck, the way he can, you know, see the ice and move his feet. And uh, I said, oh, give me a chance of them. I want to play with this guy. And, uh, you know, it's been a lot of fun. He, he wants to learn. He wants to get better. I think he compliments us pretty well on, on that line. Well, I guess we should toot uh, Coacher's horn there. <laughs> he was very excited to have Dolan on his on his line, uh, even going to Doug Wilson. It's kind of weird. Like, how much pull do players, or at least top players, have yeah. with management in telling them who they want to play with and who's on their line, <laughs> and uh, also telling because that was from. So he started skating with them in the captain's skate. Now, for those who don't know what that is, it's uh, before training camp starts. Um, I don't know what the rules are for the NHL, but I know for other sports and other things, you can only have so many games coached by a coach uh, or practices coached by a coach. So um, the captains usually get together and do a, just an informal kind of skating, kind of getting loose. I mean, everyone's already pretty much in shape at this point and you're about to go into camp. So it kind of brings everyone together that's in town and ready to go. Um, and 
what's telling for another thing is Dolan was there for this. It wasn't like he was in Sweden and hanging out. He was in San Jose ready to go. So he got to meet the boys and hang out with Couture and they hit it off really well. And, and he went to Doug Wilson and said, get this guy on my line. Um, I mean, we'll get to this later, but it's interesting that at that point, Kane was still in the running for being on the team. And that wasn't mentioned, you know, that he wants Kane on his line. Yeah. He went to Doug Wilson after this, after the, the, uh, captain skate and asked to have him on his line yeah. so that that's interesting to me yeah and, and i mean i kind of figured he was going to get a spot on the roster just because he has that one-way contract although they had said that look just because he's got a one-way contract doesn't mean he's a shoe in on the team right he still has to earn his spot and if he gets put down uh through waivers and he gets put down through waivers he may get claimed he may not uh but it was just one of those things where you know, you weren't really sure if, if he was or wasn't, but I, I kind of felt like he was going to be on that team based on what the coaching staff was saying. I mean, to say that if whether he was or wasn't going to be there. But usually you give a guy a one-way contract, he gets a good shot. Mm-hmm. And this is just that vote of confidence from Logan Couture. And I agree with you. It's kind of strange hearing that, you know, a certain player. I mean, it's it's the captain of the team, right? right. So yeah. it, he's, he's been on the team for quite a while now. So I, if anybody has pull, it's got to be Couture, right? So... I don't know. I, I mean, I think it's great. I think it's great that he goes and finds this guy that uh, you know he's clicking well with. They go out there and they're uh, they're playing well together. And yes, of course, Kutcher wants to <laughs> take some credit for that. It's hey, right on. Why not? Uh, anything else you want to talk about for that that one game or that Kutcher quote or anything? Uh, no, just there's another quote uh, from Kutcher which oh. I don't have a clip of. But this he was asked about fatigue being a problem of being at that tail end of a road trip. Um, I believe it was Kurz that asked him that, and, and Couture laughed, and he said, we're six games into the season. If, <laughs> if fatigue is a factor right now, then we have other problems, and I thought that was pretty funny. Just the way that he was like, no, no, yeah. that, that's, not that it was a dumb question, but it's a question that I think any reporter would have asked, um, especially since it was the, the end of the five-game yeah. road trip. It looked like they were just ready to go home and, and be done with it, and uh, so it had to be asked, and he gave it. I thought it was a good quote. It wasn't just yeah. a no it was it was creative, I guess. A little right. jab, a little sarcasm. That's yeah. okay. Um, but yeah, it's it's one of those where that question's more appropriate for middle of the season, end of the season, not yeah. the first six ninety. Games, yeah. yeah, exactly. So uh, to to see to see him kind of fire back and be a little, you know a little quip there, yeah. um, kind of kind of a fun quote. Kevin Kerr's expense. Sorry, Kersey. Right. But uh, anyway, moving on from that game, uh, we go to the game against Montreal. Now, that was the end of the road trip. They're back at home now. We're expecting, you know, a little bit of a good showing, especially against Montreal. Montreal hasn't won in San Jose previously in, what, so 99? 1999 was their last win in San Jose. Jeez. <laughs> so, uh, we're... I mean, they don't, they don't only play once a year, so it's not that many games. And then there was a number of years yeah. right after the lockout where uh, when you're in the other conference, you only played once every three years. So it's even less games than every year uh, for a couple of those. Yeah, and and we've seen Montreal before, and they mm-hmm. didn't they did not impress, right? So we were thinking, okay, it's probably just going to be another one of those games, you know, where we kind of stomp on these guys. But that that was not the case. Uh, Montreal mm-hmm. came out; they were ready to rock. Uh, they beat the Sharks by a score of four uh, nothing. It's you were at this. game. I, I was at this game actually with Super Producer Jason. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was it was actually kind of fun being able to be there just wasn't fun watching it unfortunately <laughs> uh we did have a giveaway that night if, if you remember this now the, the mm-hmm. twitter giveaway we gave away some tickets uh the the fans that were able to win that we we met them during in the stands and everything we actually were able to get some cupcakes and bring them to them as well if you happen to win tickets from us this is not an everyday thing uh, well we i was gonna say to do this, so. there might be a good opportunity to have more of these kind of uh tickets pop up last minute and we'll throw this up usually you'll be on twitter right okay. so if you're on twitter you should follow us because there's a chance that this could happen i would say for the rest of the season maybe at least two or three more times would be okay. my guess it's coming out of his pocket otherwise. So, so, yeah, don't worry about it, guys. He's the one that said it, so uh, track him down. Okay, so, uh, but yes, we were at the game. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I just felt like they, they could not make a pass, at least in the first two periods. I, unfortunately, both Super Jason and I had to leave after the second period. We had stuff with my kids. I don't know what he had to do, but um, I, just, I felt like they couldn't make a single pass. Like, everything that they were, from me to you, it was, they were dropping it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, they were off the mark. They just didn't seem to be on the same page. And it, it was just really frustrating to watch them because I know that they're a better team than that, you know? And it's, it's like the last two seasons, I know they're a better team than that, you know? Right. But to be able to see it in this kind of this just one game, everything just kind of not clicking well, uh, it was just really, really frustrating. So they slide to, you know, to losing three in a row here. So after a 4-0 start... <laughs> I know. 
People got spoiled. Yeah. <laughs> Their expectations were low. Yeah. They start 4-0, so they go up here, and then they yeah. lose three. And you're like, oh, man, this is exactly who we thought they were going to be, right? <laughs> then people are just bagging yeah. on them. I, I mean, honestly, I still think I know I had said, you know, at the, the beginning of the last show that they're a playoff team. They're not going to get bounced in the first round. Now I'm looking at this again. Do I have to, <laughs> do I have to change my mind? Now I, that I, you were there in person still, and watched a bad game. <laughs> I still don't think so. I still think that they're going to be a playoff team. Uh, I don't know if they're going to bounce in the first round or not. I'm just trying to be optimistic here. But I still think that they're a playoff team. All right. Uh, re- regardless. They ran into a ridiculously hot Jake Allen. Now, yes. I don't think Jake Allen was the entire reason. You really think he's hot? Though? I think that he was. No, I thought the team was not that bad or not that good. Oh, do I think he's hot? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, so, no, whatever. Um, I, I don't think that he was the entire reason that they lost. Again, I feel like they were not just clicking well they put up 45 shots on goal and he saved every last one it's like a stereotypical bad game where the sharks aren't there for a full game right and then it's like they're cramming for the exam and the last (laughs) 10 minutes the third period they're they're throwing everything at them trying to at least stop the shutout yeah and maybe spark a comeback and that's that's what this game felt like and and that third period i thought the sharks actually started to click and look dangerous and then uh just couldn't solve it couldn't solve Jake Allen. He he had some incredible, incredible saves that were up close in high danger spots. Yeah. It was like, are you kidding? Like just terrible puck luck on the sharks on the sharks end, um, or great puck luck on <laughs> Jake Allen's end. But he definitely deserved that shutout. He definitely worked hard for it. It wasn't like a 16 save shutout. Yeah. It's 45 saves, which happens to be the second long, uh, second largest save shutout in Montreal history. And if you think of how deep Montreal's yeah. history. Uh, the last save, or the last shutout that had more saves was Jacques Plante in 1955, which is insane. It's 52 or 53 saves. Or fi- yeah, sorry, it was in 1955. It was, a, it was over 50 yeah. saves, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. Mm-hmm. And re- especially for back in that day where, I mean, the, the goaltending, the guys were smoking cigarettes like, <laughs> yeah. in the locker room. They didn't right? have slap shots back then, I don't think, <laughs> in the 50s. Well, I mean, they certainly didn't have curves on their sticks, did they? I mean, it's no. made straight up wood. In real know? wood sticks, yeah. 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 The puck usually stays flat on the on the ice. Yeah. They didn't wear masks, like, just crazy. You would think back then that they would have invented the butterfly a lot, a lot sooner because the pucks weren't coming off the ground. Right. You know? They just weren't as flexible because they were smoking cigarettes. But then you <laughs> <laughs> drinking beers in between periods. That's where the pad stack comes in right. handy, though, right? Yes. Yeah, there you go. So... Uh, yeah, no, Jake Allen, I think it was a perfect storm of Jake Allen playing, uh, you know, out of this world uh, as well as the Sharks just not being able to connect. Now, again, they, they had 45 shots on goal. So for me to sit here and say it didn't seem like they were they were making connections, yeah. maybe that's a little goofy sounding. But again, it just it didn't look like it to me. I don't know. Were you watching that game at all? Were you able to? I actually watched most of the third period, oh, ironically okay. enough. There so, you go. Uh, and it looked uh, to me, it was, I bet most of those shots came in the third period because okay. they were really... It looked like they had a good talk in the in between the second and third mm-hmm. period and came out pretty hard and uh, just couldn't do it. Very good. Well, after the Montreal game, and this is kind of where I kind of wonder how much of, of what I'm about to talk about maybe had affected the guys during that Montreal game because a slew of <laughs> Sharks go on the COVID protocol list and they get knocked out of the next game. So we're talking about Eric Carlson, mm-hmm. uh, Jacob Middleton, we're talking about Vlasic, Shimmick, Cogliano. We're talking about Nieto. And there was a seventh one. I can't remember the seventh one, but there was uh, one more. Did you put it down? You and, put uh, it and Bob Bugner, obviously, the coach being out as well. Uh, and then on top yeah. of all that, and just COVID aside, Logan Couture was injured and out. He was sick. Uh, I'm sorry, he was sick, sick and but out, he was not, not COVID, but it, he, had, right. he had the flu or something. Yeah, so so he's yeah. just not feeling well. So that's it was it was eight players yeah. that were out, seven of which on COVID protocol and one one head coach, right? So <laughs> that's a whole lot to be missing for a game. And we're thinking, okay, the, I think it was uh, Nick HBK one fifty. He says it's the uh, Sharkuda because it was half sharks <laughs> yeah. and half barracuda. Yeah. Even even Middleton, right? Middleton's normally a barracuda player. This season he's been you know stepping in and playing yeah. alongside Eric Carlson. But he was one of the guys knocked out too. So it's not even like your top AHL guy that you're bringing up and in. Middleton's already there. If he's the guy that they felt comfortable with playing in the NHL, he was already there. Yep. And he was out. So, I mean, for a, that, just an incredible list of players that are gone from that lineup. And you take a look specifically at the defense. Four guys from the <laughs> AHL jump into the game at the same time. I think they said it was the second time in Sharks history that 
two defensemen had played their first game oh, on the same game. Uh, just some some crazy stuff going on there. Yeah. And for them to go and play as hard as they did and as well as they did, um, it was just it was shocking to me to see them kind of pull this one out. I was fully expecting Winnipeg to take advantage of this. I don't think you were the only one. And just yeah. smoke them, yeah. you know? Um, so Hurdle comes out, scores the first goal. Good on him. And it takes Winnipeg all of, what, 56 minutes and some odd seconds yeah. to come back and finally score the game-tying goal near the end of the third period. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, the game goes to overtime, and there's a penalty. It's four on three. Timo Meyer gets the one-timer from uh, Kevin LeBanc. <laughs> Two-to-one overtime win. I mean, I you can't draw this stuff up. I mean, it's just incredible that you're missing basically half your team and mm-hmm. a lot of superstars. Yeah, and I kind of feel bad. We got rid of that Timo clock. We no longer have it. <laughs> we gave it away to a uh, fantasy hockey winner. You know what? <laughs> Credit where credit's due. We've been bagging on Timo. If we had the clock, I would be. it would be up. It would be up all season, I'd so, say. So far this season, he's he's been incredible. He really has you know, been incredible. I was, over the summer, he played in that uh, in that championship or the uh, tournament, mm-hmm. and he was playing for, uh, I'm going to say Sweden. It's not Switzerland. Sweden. Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> I should just say Sweden to be consistent here. Uh, he's playing for Switzerland. I thought he he played really well and he was scoring, and I thought that that was a uh, great confidence booster for okay. him coming back into the NHL, plus a revamped group, re-energized group, having a full training camp. I was I'm not the I'm not alone here. I'm not like like I was going out a limb. A lot of people were expecting a lot of things coming out of Timo, but um, he seems to really be taking charge on this team and not he's he's coming out of the shadows yeah instead of kind of being a perimeter player and playing the shadows he's now stepping up and becoming the guy kind of reminds me of like Tomas Hurdle when he first started he was a great player but he wasn't consistent enough to carry a team now he is obviously yeah, yeah. but it took him a couple steps he had injuries so he was delayed a little bit longer Timo just I don't know the last two years he, he was not he was not that guy and yeah. this is the guy that we were expecting him to be I'd say two years ago everyone expected him to be right. stepping up into that role but um, I think he's been playing great and looks great and maybe it's you know Dolan's on the line along with Coach Sher and him so yeah. um, maybe it's just you know a whole bunch of things coming together for him at the right time uh, but he is he's playing very well and it's great to see and it's great to see him bag an overtime winner right yeah on no absolutely one timer he just smoked that he thing. really did he, <laughs> he, oh my goodness that puck went flying I mean now it was a little bit of uh, you know luck there it deflected off of a defenseman's shin guard or whatever it was but um, bottom line puck went in so uh, really happy to see again Timo getting his chances making the best of them and mm-hmm. pulling out a win that by all accounts they had, they had no business winning that game considering the rush that they had. Uh, when you take a look at the guys that came out, let's take a look at the guys that came in. There was Ryan Merkley. I don't know his first name, but uh, Megna Malosh. Malosh. Not, see, I got Malak Malosh. <laughs> it's Malosh, Malosh. apparently. Uh, and then uh, Hataka, right? <laughs> I'm going to butcher Sen- that Senteri one. Senteri yeah. Hataka, I yeah. think, is that's how Dan Rizanowski. If Dan Rizanowski says it that way, I'm saying it that way, okay? Um, that was four of the six D core, right? A bunch I, of names that we don't know a whole lot about them right now. We've heard their names, obviously. Right. And we've seen some of them play, yes. But we don't really know what they're all so, totally capable of, right? So to have them jump in and just start, you know, p- playing NHL <laughs> minutes here, right? Now, they didn't yeah. play as many NHL minutes because you look at Burns. Burns had 29 minutes. Well, it was overtime. Yeah. So that pads it a little bit, but not a lot. A little bit, Maybe a right? Minute, yeah, in a, a minute or so. Okay, uh, but then you look at Mario Ferraro, mm-hmm. and Mario Ferraro had twenty-five and a half or so minutes. Mm-hmm. Now, <laughs> it's funny seeing Mario Ferraro with that much minutes because I mean, obviously, there's a lot you know less talent on the roster. You need him, right? Yeah. But to see a guy who's who's stepped up, he's come so far from where he started to be able to play twenty-five minutes alongside a guy like Brent Burns, mm-hmm. and really be, you know, the guy on defense apart from Brent, um, it, it shows just the kind of that leadership quality. Again, he's really earned that A. Yeah, and yeah. they uh, there was a little interview afterwards with Brent Burns here, and we're going to show a clip in a minute, but um, it, he kind of talks about it, how you kind of go into the game, like you hear these news, and you're kind of like, oh, well, okay, that, that happened. We're missing all these players. I know I'm going to make kind of have to be the guy at least on defense, to carry the team. Um, uh, him and Ferrara are kind of like, okay, well, it, it's almost like they have laser focus because they know they're the only ones there that could really make a big difference. Um, I mean, you have four of your six defensemen, that yeah. two of which have never played the NHL, 
coming up and playing. Like you can't you can't shelter four guys, <laughs> right? If it was just, let's say it was Merkley playing in his first game in a normal yeah. lineup, he probably would have gotten 10, 12 minutes, and two or three of those are probably on the power play just to kind of get him out there but shelter him in a way. Yeah. He had 15 or 16 minutes because they just couldn't shelter him. Same with uh, Hataka. 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 I'm going to call him Hataka. Hataka. I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, same. I think he had about 15 or 60 minutes. So they could not shelter them. Right. But they stepped up. Yeah. It was great. It was great to see that they were uh, they weren't a huge liability out there. Um, kudos to Reimer. I thought Reimer had a fantastic game. Yep. Um, and we'll speak about him more in a minute. But I think he uh, he really solidifies the back and calms everyone down and controls the game very well. Um, very different than what we've seen for the last you know six seasons with Martin Jones yeah. or how many he's been here or was here. Um, but yeah, let's let's play this clip now. Brent Burns. It's two questions here. Um, he was asked kind of like to, to go through what the day was like when they found out about, you know, half, almost half the team missing because they had to go get tested and, and were positive. And then the follow up question here, um, asking to talk about both Merkley and Hitaka, Hataka coming in and playing, uh, playing their first NHL games. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, you're thinking it's no different than, than, if you had have an injury or something happens and you and you're gonna miss guys, I mean it's you, you're just planning on on getting there and playing the game and um, you know we needed to win so that was a lot of the talk. I, I think a lot of the like the craziness was you know uh, not planning on getting up in the morning and testing coming to the rink. You know I I kind of had a you, you try to create a routine for a four o'clock game that's not very normal so it's you know, timing your breakfast and, and sleeping to a certain time. And I, I ended up seeing a text earlier. So, um, are we allowed to talk about like what happened or like all that stuff? Like, yeah. So I, it's just a text early in the morning I, and it kind of just messes up the day a little bit, you know, sleeping pattern and then, uh, then eating pattern. But like I said before, a lot of times that, um, you get like a little bit of a, an endorphin rush during the game and, and it and usually helps. I think, uh, it uh you know the legs feel a little bit better um and you and you just kind of play i i think you, you see a lot of times on uh on different games that that kind of result happens and um it was a big win and what can you say about uh santeri and ryan uh stepping in the uh, first nhl games i uh, just got to be tough for a defenseman to step in like that obviously yeah you know i think well you know i said it's probably a little bit nicer for those guys to get that first one and have, you know, just a crazy ass day for them where they don't really have time to think about, you know, I'm playing my first game tomorrow or you've got all these things happening and you're trying to plan, you know, maybe, I don't know, your parents coming in or like, you know, this is a pretty crazy day for a lot of those guys. Um, you know, guys finding out late notice and, and that, like I said before, sometimes that's the best thing. So those guys got to play their first game with, not a lot of time to think about it and uh you know they get a good result in it and i, I think that can just really help every all, all those guys in that in that circumstance i really liked how uh, he kind of went off camera and was like hey can we can we talk about <laughs> am i in trouble am i in trouble <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh so yeah the, the the decor there right um the forwards that had stepped in for this game too You've got uh, John Leonard mm -hmm. uh, on top of, uh, uh, not Ryan, Nick, Nick Merkley right. was the other four that stepped in. Uh, they did an admirable job, I thought, uh, played fairly well. Uh, again, these young guys just soaking up NHL minutes, getting some good experience and whatnot. So uh, to have them jump in, uh, really good stuff. Of course, the forwards being out, uh, we forgot to add uh, Jonathan Dolan was another one on the COVID right. list there. That was the guy that we were forgetting. Uh, so, I mean, imagine if this happened <laughs> last season. Done. The depth that the Sharks don't have compared to now, or the, I would say the talent that they brought in yeah. versus the talent that they could have brought in last year, yeah. uh, they definitely would have been sunk. Well, and it's funny because we've talked about this before. Like, what happens if Hurdle goes down? This team is done. Mm -hmm. They kind of threw that back in our face a little bit, that, that one game. Just that oh, one game. Hurdle was there, though. No, I know, but I mean, Couture was out. Oh, I know. Dolan's I know. out. Carlson's out. Well, okay. Your whole decor is... It was one you know? game, and they went to overtime. That's that's what I'm saying. I, that's yeah. not sustainable at right. all. If these guys are going to miss another game or two, I don't. I think the Sharks would be in trouble this week. Right. No, but, I, I would agree with you there, but it, it is, at least for that one game, 
kind of threw it back at us. It's kind of like the the uh, the backup backup goalie coming into a game and winning. Yeah, it's the almost, emergency, almost like that. Yeah, not um, quite, not quite name? that level. David the Ayers. Uh, there's a there's a yeah, guy every couple Carolina, of years. the 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 guy that was cutting ice for the Toronto. Toronto. Yeah, and he shut out Toronto, <laughs> or not shut him out, but he beat him. Yeah, he beat him. That's good stuff. Love that story. Anyway, um, so let's go ahead and move on from the uh, Winnipeg game. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about some of the goalie stats. Okay, so sure. Um, Reimer, like you said, stepped in, played uh, really, really well. He's got four games played. I think Hill's got five games played now. Mm-hmm. His stats are uh, noticeably better than Aiden Hill's. So I guess the question, and then you guys can kind of uh, ponder this question as Aaron goes over the stats, is has Reimer kind of maybe taken over as the number one in the eyes of the coaching staff? But go ahead and go over the stats. Uh, well, let's see. Reimer's he's got 1.13 goals against average and a 964 save percentage. Crazy. Uh, and Hill has a 295 goals against average and 893 save percentage. So Reimer, because he's only played four games, even though there's only been, what, in the NHL average, about eight, nine games total, um, they won't show him on the list at the top of goalie stats because he's only played four games. Not yeah. enough. It's probably that five or six game threshold that you need to have. So we'll see where that ranks and maybe another handful, another week or two, he might be up actually on the leaderboard. But yeah. he's in tops of the league right now. And um, I'm not saying he's an elite goalie. He's going to stay up there. But he is a definitely a bigger upgrade over Jones. I mean, both of them are. Um, he'll... Uh, although Jones, have you seen what he's done in yeah, Philadelphia? He's playing well in Philly, right? I'm not gonna go down that road, but I'm just saying, like, I think he's still a serviceable NHL goalie as a backup. Jones, not a starter anymore, but I could see him kind of playing the role of what Reimer's doing right now, exactly for San Jose. Come in, and you have a young guy like Aiden mm-hmm. Hill, and they have Carter Hart in Philly, and when they start to falter or they're just they need a break. You come in and you can take a game or two here and there and put some elite stats up. Yeah. Now, I don't think Reimer's going to be, he's not going to be a clear cut starter. Um, he hasn't really been that his entire career. He's never started more than 40 something games anyway. So I see that still being split. And mm-hmm. I think in the beginning of the season, I said it would be every three games for Hill and one game for Reimer, every two to one, something like that. Mm-hmm. The ratio will kind of change depending on how they're performing. And Hill started off hot, and then he kind of faltered a little. And and I don't think he looked terrible, but I think he just needed a break and probably have some work in the back off yeah. and and get back on track. And Reimer, for his credit, he's he's taken the uh, the reins kind of here. And now I think we're going to see Reimer get two starts every Aiden Hill one start, um, maybe for the next week or two until. Reimer starts to falter, and then they'll yeah. go back and forth. And this is exactly what I think the Sharks wanted. It's kind of a competition, that a healthy competition. It's not like they hate each other. They're rooting for each other. They're making each other better. They're making they want they want the team to win. Yeah. So I I'm Reimer brings very good stability back there, and this is something that Jones never really did. I noticed where the puck comes in, and it's not really like a big save that he makes, but Jones would kind of kick it into the corner and let his defenseman get it. Um, and Reimer will sl- will stop it mm-hmm. and get a faceoff. Now the Sharks are much better at faceoffs this year, so it's a little less dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I think he controls the game and slows it down a lot better than Jones did. A little bit more control, I guess. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, by all accounts, whatever it is that he's doing, it seems to be working out. Okay, um, it's not like Hill has astronomically more games than Reimer does. He's only got one more game played, so the stats. You would think that if Aiden Hill's stats were so much worse, either he's that worse of a goalie or he's he's playing that many more games and he's fatigued, like you said. And Aiden Hill has a shutout and Reimer does not. Yeah. So his stats are even skewed a little bit more. They should be a little worse, I guess yeah. you should say, or you could say. Aiden Hill, I mean. Yeah. Like yeah. it, it, there, that's bringing his shutout is bringing down his stats more. Yeah, bringing totally. down his goals against average. And, and we go back to something that we said in previous episodes as well. This is this is exactly why Doug Wilson went out and got Reimer because mm-hmm. you know when when Hill's not doing well, he's the guy that you can throw in there. Now if Reimer, he may not be a starter, he may never be a starter, and then that's fine. But he's able to take on a string of games. It looks like, and he's he's putting together you know quite a few good games so far. Mm-hmm. So. At least until Aiden Hill kind of figures himself back out. Now let's let's also kind of bring ourselves back to earth here with Aiden Hill. This is a guy who had how many games played total in the NHL? Thirty or forty, maybe. Forty something, yeah. maybe, I think is what it was. I mean, this is not 
and this is not a veteran in the league, so he's finally getting an opportunity to kind of be the starter here, mm -hmm. right? So he's getting this chance. Um, he's he's still learning the game, I think. He's still learning uh, some of the things that he needs to do. Of getting Baca is going to work with him, obviously, on those types of things. But it's going to take a little bit of time. And for him to have a guy like Reimer able to kind of close the gap when he's not able to perform or he needs some time, as Aaron's saying, you know, with, with Nabokov to kind of get his game back to going where it needs to be. What better guy right now than, than Reimer? I mean, he stepped in, he's done great. So, I mean, kudos to Doug Wilson going out and getting the right people here. It's almost like the same thing with, we'll go back away from goalies for a second. We'll look at the forwards and everybody else. I mean, we, we saw uh, Hataka playing really, really well in like the, the, the development camp and everything else they had. They were very impressed with him. By all accounts, it seems like he almost made the team. Middleton made it over him, that's fine. But it's a guy that you can rely on to come in and play. And when they had the whole COVID thing going on there, <laughs> I mean, he jumped right in and he did a great job. You took a look at guys like uh, Barabanov. Mm -hmm. You know, Barabanov wasn't a regular in the lineup when the season started, but he jumped in and he's a guy that was th thrown into the top six. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's a little bit more depth, I think, in this team now than we've seen in previous seasons. And that goes for both the, the defense, as I just talked about, the four core, as I just talked about, because you, you throw in a guy in the top six, and Hataka was in there, and he, one of the top four, somebody right. in there was in the top four, at least two of them were, right? Yep. Uh, and then, of course, a guy like uh, Reimer. These are all guys that, you know, that were either brought in or they were drafted, and um, they're just, they're showing up now. So uh, we've got a little bit of depth. Good on the, the uh, scouting, good on Doug Wilson, good on these guys for, for being able to put together a team that can be a little bit resilient when, you know, their starters and their number ones either aren't showing up or are sick or whatever the case is. So uh, pretty happy with the team so far. We'll have to see in the upcoming games, we'll talk about those in just a minute here. We'll have to see how that whole thing shakes out. But uh, one player that's been missing pretty much the <laughs> entire season, right? Uh, and all of camp and everything else, yeah. Evander Kane. I don't have a whole lot to say about Kane right now. Maybe I'll chime in. I know you've got some things you wanted to kind of put out there. So uh, I'll just go ahead and let you. Sure, we've go. been getting hit up a lot, uh, asking what our thoughts of what the whole situation would look like when he comes back, or when, not when he comes back, when his suspension is yeah. over in 21 games. Now I think he's eligible for the first one is like the very first, beginning of December, so we have another month. Um, but right now, I don't. we don't have any inside information, so we don't know if this is what's gonna happen, but we can kind of talk about what things would look like if he does or doesn't play. Yeah. Um, from what it sounds like, from what we've been reading and hearing and all the quotes in the post game, to me it sounds like he's not gonna be coming back to the team. Um, in the sense that um, the Sharks will probably do what they did, what the Rangers did to Tony D'Angelo last mm -hmm. year, um, and what uh, the Buffalo Sabres did with Zach Bogosian, I think two seasons ago. Um, they put them into the minors. So they put them into waivers and any team can claim them. No team's gonna claim him because he's getting paid $7 million. Right. So that means he has to report to the AHL. Now, this is where it kind of gets a little weird. If Evander Kane was like, I'm not gonna play in the minors, you know, forget that, and he doesn't report, then he's suspended without pay. And then he can get, you can terminate his contract, which is just odd. Then if he does play, now this is the thing, he needs money. He's in yep. bankruptcy court. So if he does play in the NHL, AHL in the minors, um, for the cap hit, it's kind of weird because it takes, from what I from what I read, it takes uh, the minimum salary, which is 750 or 800,000 now, I think it might be 800. Okay. And then it adds a little percentage on top of that. So the cap hit wouldn't be $7 million for the Sharks. It would be closer to like five and a half or something. So it gets reduced. Um, now what I think would happen is, I would think that he wouldn't report and that he, wouldn't, he would get suspended, he wouldn't get paid. And then I think the Sharks have to wait until the buyout period in June before they can actually do the buyout. And then any team could sign up at that point because you terminate the contract or you buy out the contract. It seems kind of weird to me that I don't know. You feel like he wouldn't. He wouldn't report. Um, he needs money. I know. That, I'm not sure what he would do. I'm not sure. So I, I for for me, I kind of feel like he would just tear up the AHL. <laughs> like I don't know. I think he would just absolutely obliterate the AHL and just be like, I need money. Right. I mean, that's the thing. He could be playing because he needs the money. This is the same guy that wanted to fight Jake right. Paul or Logan Paul or whatever one of the Paul brothers. It's the same yeah. guy that wanted to do. A, you know, wanted to box him. 
um, presumably for money, and I think we understand why now, right? So I don't think he's going to say, well, I'm not going to play in the AHL, right? Uh, I think he would absolutely play and, uh, and and just get paid. Again, he needs he needs it. So um, if he doesn't report, though, uh, and they can terminate his contract, okay, that's problem solved right there. But I guess if you know it goes to the next season and they just do the same thing, put him in the AHL, and right. if he does or doesn't report, then whatever. But at least you're getting you're saving a little bit in cap because one way or another, if you're stuck with the contract, you may as well have a million and a half, whatever it is, off of the books, right? It's just it's really bad situation because if and when they buy him out, he's going to be on the books until because of the way the buyout works yeah. until twenty twenty nine or twenty thirty or something like that. Like it's. It's like another eight years for four years left. It's like, yeah. what do you want to do? And they made it like this because they don't want you. People were abusing the, the system. Yeah. Yeah. Like, just this goes back the last fifteen years or so of GMs doing <laughs> breaking the rules that they wrote. <laughs> Twelve year deals and fifteen year deals. Whatever it was, yeah. Luongo. Uh, no, wasn't it? Kovalchuk had oh. signed this ridiculous contract that he'd be playing through until he was like forty five years old. <laughs> So that the whole reason they did it is they could even out the cap space. Yeah, yeah. So instead of it being ten million hit in the cap space, it would be like six million dollars a year over fifteen years. So it, it, yeah, they broke. That was Lou Lamorello. Like he, of course, he broke it. Yeah, of course he did. Anyway, um, so there's all these rules in place, and there's waivers, unconditional waivers, all kinds of things that he's gonna have to pass through. Yeah. And I just don't think any team would would take him. But let's say he does play the AHL and he's tearing it up. Now the other teams are kind of like, well... See? Tony D'Angelo got got back in the NHL. That's, so. that's kind of where I'm at. Like, if there's a team that is desperate for offense, Buffalo. And, uh, no, they, Buffalo would never <laughs> take him. <laughs> I mean, they I got said rid that, of him. I said that because there's people that want Jack Eichel. Well, that's Buffalo why. would never take Kane. I know that. Ever. That's, I know that, but... the. There's two teams out there, <laughs> Buffalo and Winnipeg. That will never take them. He burned the bridges yes, there. That, they would never take them. No, I get that. Trust me, I get that. Um, but, I, yeah, there's, there's there's probably a team out there that could really use some offense. That it, if, it would be, like, right around the trade deadline, right? And they're like, who could we add right yeah. now? Let's do it. We'll trade for Kane, and maybe the Sharks will bite and retain salary, 50% yeah, of the salary. I'm sure they would retain salary. Yeah, just think, I'd rather... Have fifty. I would rather that, right? exactly. I'd rather have three point five million, million on the books for four years mm-hmm. than have five and a half million yeah. on the books for five years or yeah. eight years or whatever it yeah, was. Whatever. Yeah, it just to me it makes more sense. Um, but we're talking about ways to get rid of Evander Kane right now. <laughs> it's just I know. I don't know, man. Like um, it's a, it's a goofy situation. We'll just have to see how it plays out. And it, again, the twenty one games. Is up in December, you said? I think it's like the very first first day of December, okay. whenever that first game is. Um, I just don't think that he's coming back. Yeah. I, and I don't think so either. There's a telling quote from Couture uh, that f- I think it was the Montreal, when, when they were in Montreal and it was the, the news was broke that it was a 21-game suspension, um, someone had asked if he had even talked to, Co- if, talked to Kane, and he <laughs> was like, uh, no, I haven't talked to him in a while. Yeah. And as far as I know, nobody on the team has talked to him. I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. So this goes, I think this goes way back. Like, the decision was made yeah. before training camp. I mean, before the whole anything came out. So I think the Sharks knew something was up and, and was trying to... I know they were trying to shop him around the summer before yeah. anything broke. Yeah. And nobody wanted him. Yeah. Probably because of his salary. It was just too high. Honestly, though, I mean, for... I mean, for the points he was putting up, if forget everything else. For the points he was putting up, Seven million a year doesn't seem too bad to me, but um, I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be uh, we'll be talking about <laughs> Kane, I'm sure, more often. Uh, maybe we'll have a live next week or something. We'll be able to chat with you guys then. Who knows? But uh, okay. So enough of of, of Vander Kane. Um, the, the big thing with Kane, nobody knows, man. Nobody knows. <laughs> so everybody wants to talk about it, but there's there's not as much to really like no. it's all speculation and what ifs and that kind of thing which I just, is fun, I just wanted to cover the scenarios of what yeah. it would look like if he were to not play and yeah. how they could get rid of him and all that stuff yeah I, I mean and again like, like I said it, it, it's fun to go over those but yeah. like if you're coming looking for news on Kane I'm sorry to disappoint you nobody's got any news on Kane no one's mm-hmm. going to until like Kurz or Shang kind of break it it but, wouldn't be until probably Thanksgiving yeah yeah so anyway 
done with that. Moving on to uh, next games, which happens to be in Buffalo, or against Buffalo, I should say. Against Buffalo, <laughs> Against yeah. Buffalo, at home. Um, you know, for, for this one, Cogliano is off of the COVID protocol list mm-hmm. now. Uh, it seems like Jonathan Dolan might be coming off of the list. There's a possibility that yeah. he could make the game. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Kachur potentially feeling better as well, so he might be coming back in. But it sounds like Kevin LeBanc... Uh, will be out for COVID protocol. Mm-hmm. So um, he was added. He wasn't originally. Yeah, he was it. not. Yeah. He he was. He played in the game. He did play in the yeah. game uh, in the famous COVID game. <laughs> uh, and, and then after the fact, I guess he was uh, I don't know, diagnosed. I don't know how you tested positive. Tested positive. Sure. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Words, words elude me right now. I don't know. It's getting late. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah. Sharks playing against Buffalo. This one. What do you think? Buffalo's been playing pretty well. Yeah. Um, the thing that makes me think that they won't is because they're on a road trip out on the West Coast. And th- when those teams come in from the Northeast, they kind of travel and they hit. They go Vegas, Anaheim, L.A., San Jose, now Seattle. Yeah. Kind of work their way around. So the Sharks are usually not the first destination. So they're kind of yeah. coming through and they're getting through the gauntlet. And usually the California slash Pacific Coast teams are bigger, heavier teams. So you kind of get worn out and you're exhausted. Mm-hmm. So... um it kind of plays in the Sharks' favor playing against those teams at home. Um, I think uh, it's going to be tough. Beca- I mean, Buffalo is not as talented as they used to be. Right. Obviously, no Jack Eichel. Right. Um, and the Sharks are missing a lot of their players again. So, uh, this one's going to be tough. I almost want to say give the edge to Buffalo because they have a little bit more I do. NHL experience on their team overall. Yeah. Um, hopefully, the Sharks can can solve them. I'm kind of in the same boat. I, I feel like, you know, again, they're not missing a ton of players like we are. Now, I think the game against Winnipeg showed what a bunch of young guys stepping in uh, can do. But it's is it a flash in the pan? Is it something that they were all jacked up? And, oh, it's our <laughs> NHL. Let's go. we got to show them how we can play. And, you know, and then after that, it's kind of it starts to peter off a little bit. Um I don't know. I, I got to give the edge to Buffalo here. But I, I'm, I'm hoping for a win, obviously. But I just think that they're uh, a little bit more... Um, it that's the team that they are already yeah. right versus the Sharks that we're kind of depleted right now. Uh, so we'll see. It should be a good game. I think um, it's interesting how you take away teams' leading scorers and they tend to play better. Isn't <laughs> right. that weird? Yeah. yeah, it's just strange. Yeah. So anyway, uh, that's the game is on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Um, the game on Thursday is against the New Jersey. Like, uh, or, sorry, St. Louis. St. Louis. St. Louis Blues. Uh, St. Louis Blues still a pretty good team. Still a pretty good team. I think last year they were hit hard with injuries. Mm. So I don't know if you remember about halfway through last year's shortened season, the Sharks actually were almost caught up to the Blues. I think they were within a point of them in that last playoff spot. Um, that's mainly because of the Blues. I think both COVID stuff and injuries, uh, they missed a lot of man games last year. So mm. they're still a good team. Um, I, this one's going to be a tough one. I think it'll be an exciting one. This will be a good one to go to for sure because I think people still remember from three years oh, ago yeah. now, three seasons ago, um, how that ended. So I think uh, St. Louis Blues games are always good to go to, and, and I bet there's a fight or two. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think Kurz had mentioned that the the depleted Shark roster may be getting a little bit of a break here, a little bit of, uh, of luck. And, and think these two games, the next two games, are they're playing against teams that are on the second of a back-to-back. Okay. I think yeah. that's what he had said. I'm pretty sure that's what he had said. So hopefully, uh, Buffalo and the uh, was the Devils. No, uh, the uh, Blues. Jesus, Blues. Devils are the next game. Sorry, uh, the the Blues. I, hopefully, they're a little bit tired going up against a uh, more rookie-ish San Jose Sharks right. team. So we'll see. Well, it's funny. Well, we're playing New Jersey on Saturday. Yeah. All three of these teams, Buffalo, New Jersey, and the Blues, all have winning records right now. Nice. So they're coming into playing the Sharks, who also still have a winning yeah. record. Um, and these are teams, other than the Blues, I'd say the, the Devils, the, the Sabres, and the Sharks kind of were the bottom of the league mm-hmm. last year, and they all have winning records right now. Interesting how the turnaround goes, mm-hmm. you know. How quick it is, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, New Jersey's kind of, they, they're a good young team, and they're kind of, they're on the up and up, and their players are kind of coming together now. Um, they have a lot of a lot of pieces coming together that are going to be high in talent in probably another mm-hmm. year or two, but they're starting to show it now. So that'll be an exciting game to watch to see some future stars in the NHL uh, coming into San Jose, um, and that one's on Saturday night. So all these games are at seven thirty. All of them are at San Jose at the SAP Center. 
and uh yeah i'm excited i i to me when east coast teams come in like that i feel like the sharks still have the advantage and uh, most of these players i think that the sharks are missing would be back by saturday i think because they're all vaccinated Mm -hmm. um i don't think they were showing major symptoms and i don't know i should have looked at what the protocols were and and how when they're allowed to come back um but anyway uh, hopefully they're starting to test negative and, and can come back sooner than later. Yeah, Cogliano one down, right? Yeah. So um, hopefully, like you said, with the with Dolan, you know that it might be two potentially yeah. two down. So hopefully the uh, the Dolanos continue to fall. And we'll get this team back in action uh, sooner than later. Although again, uh, I tip my hat to all of the the guys that came in from the AHL, uh, <laughs> stepped up, played big time. Um, the fans do appreciate you guys. Just so. make you want to go see more Barracuda games it because does man these guys these can play. It really does, and you know especially Especially next season, once the the arena is up and ready. Oh man, I'm so excited to go to that. that you should check out our uh, yeah. our tour that we did. I'm, you know, we should probably go back soon because I bet it's even looking oh, I'm even sure. better than oh, yeah. than when we were there a couple months ago. Now, yeah, a lot more done. One had the, the the new jumbo up. Yeah, that'd be nice. Anyway, uh, so uh, that, that's the, the games that are coming up this week. If you are not subscribed to our channel, please make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, uh, because when we go live, hopefully next week we'll go live, uh, you'll get that notification letting you know. And it's, it's a great community. We've had <laughs> people from other cities, other teams come into our live streams that's and true. chat with us. Yeah. And maybe they throw a little shade here and there, but <laughs> it's all in good fun. And uh, our, our community is always really nice with them. Too, we miss so. the lies. There's a lot of uh, yeah, inside do. jokes that come out of those and a lot more, we don't, I don't know, casual, loose. Toaster up. Sorry, right I didn't now, bring so. it over. Yeah, it's okay. Don't worry about it. You live so far away, too. It's hard to carry over. Anyway, uh, so, the yeah, anyway, it, make sure that you are uh, uh, subscribed and you can uh, start joining those live streams with us as well. So uh, hopefully next week we'll be doing that. However... The last thing we do need to talk about, and we said at the very top of the show, so we'll put that link down here again, movember.com slash the-fin-factor. Dash. Dash nothing. <laughs> Just no, no one then. Uh, so, yeah. So that's our uh, our, our URL there for the uh, our Movember page. I haven't put my picture up yet because I just shaved uh, earlier. So It looks the same I, from last year. It does it really? Yeah. I basically just take a big black expo marker and just kind of go across the top. The thing something. is so gross. It's thick. You guys aren't as close as I am to it. It's really scary. It is thick. Here, I'm looking right into this camera. It is. Lean it's, forward a little bit. But it <laughs> looks <laughs> fake. It looks. It's so good it looks fake. He said his kids went uh, trick-or-treating as Mario and Luigi, yeah. and it looks kind of like that. Huh? Yeah, I put fake mustaches on them, and that's the one that they chose. It's, it's exactly <laughs> like that, like the big push broom style. <laughs> push broom? Yeah, it looks like a push broom. Nice. So what, is this the Lemmy? Is this your, your... Lemmy Killmeister from okay. Motorhead. Yeah? So he's got the chops that come down, and it attaches to the mustache. Okay. And it's disgusting. It looks like I should be on a Harley. It's Yeah, it's pretty disgusting. Yeah, I'll, thank I'll you. give you that. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate um, that. You know it's Movember mustache only, though, right? Well... You got the whole thing it's going It's a big on. mustache. Okay, because it's not shave your chin. I didn't month. shave the mustache off. Okay. <laughs> I know that. I didn't do the Abraham Lincoln where it's just a big smiley face coming down. Before before November's over, you got to do the Abraham Lincoln, though, I think. Oh, man. Just do it for the last episode. Well, I don't have anything right here. No, no, okay. Grow it that won't out. Work. Yeah. <laughs> it won't work. Draw it in. I'll, I'll just, I'll do what I did last time. Last time I had just this. So I, oh, can, the shave, I can shave this yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. All right. Well, anyway, um, that's, that's our page there. Obviously a very good cause. Um, men's health issues, try to bring awareness yeah. to it. So when you're looking at this and you go, oh my God, that's disgusting. <laughs> or like my son, wow, you're ugly. Uh, at least you understand why that is the case. I can't believe you said it's that. terrible. Isn't it bad? Um, so, you know, you, you understand why, right? Um, you go get your exams done. Uh, mental health, all those different things that, you know, yeah. Movember kind of stands for. We, we want to kind of raise that awareness. We're also opening this up to not just you and me, but, uh, you know, our listeners and our viewers yeah. who would like to join the team as well. Do you have some information maybe to kind of share sure. with them on how Sure. If to you'd do like that? to uh, join our team page, we have a team page for the Fin Factor, and then we have our own personal pages off of that. If you want to put, add your personal page to our team page, uh, hit me up in the email uh, at thefinfactor at gmail.com. And uh, I will get that invite out to you and you can join our team. And that would be fantastic. Yeah, I think the more the merrier. We'd love to have a whole bunch of nasty statues on our page. Just be sure to have your Fin Factor gear on in the picture. (laughs) That would be nice. Yeah, Yeah, if you can uh, throw that hat on or that shirt on or uh, put a sticker on your forehead. (laughs) That'll work too. (laughs) Just put a sticker right here. (laughs) 
<laughs> nice. Okay. So, uh, anything else we want to say about uh, the November? Or are we, we good to go there, too? I think too? we're good, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, hey, guys. Thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, please make sure that you're following us on all of our socials and that you do subscribe and hit that bell again. We are going to be going live, uh, hopefully, very soon again here. So, uh, it'd be great to have more people than ever before in the chat there. We always have good conversations going on. We'd love for you to be a part of that as well. So for Super Producer Jason. Oh, I do have something oh, to say. Uh, okay. Today is, uh, today is Monday. So we're recording on Monday. So tomorrow is Tuesday. It's actually Paul's birthday. Oh, okay. So please, <laughs> please wish Paul a happy birthday because he's turning 40. Jeez, you're old. I'm old. So old. I really am. We'll see if he's alive tomorrow. I just thought it was funny because you stopped me from, from ending the show with today's Monday and tomorrow's Tuesday. Because <laughs> like, I have something to say. It's like, is this Sesame Street? <laughs> it's, it's, yes, it's my birthday uh, tomorrow. Well, by the time you guys see this, it'll be my birthday today. Um, so yeah, I'll be 40 years old, man. It's, it's crazy. Ridiculous. For those of you uh, keeping count, 1981 uh, was the, the year. Jeez. I know. It's crazy. My kids were born on like 13 and 14. It's just... <laughs> Jeez. Anyway, uh, thank you for making me feel old. You're He's only a few months behind me. Whatever. I'm like all another year later. Shut up. <laughs> no one's talking to you. All right. Again, for Super Producer Jason, I'm Paul. You're Mario. I'm Aaron. I'm, I'm Mustachio. <laughs> and we will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.